Hey, how's it going? It's Gentlemen, welcome back to Sunwax Channel. Today, we're going to be building the RG100 Vigina Gina. RG100 series will not be separated in half because I found out that RG100 boxes is literally the same. Uh, it's literally the same size of a XG or RG. So I decided not going to be split it in half. So Vigina Gina is actually one of my memories, one of my childhood memories. If you guys ever play a game called Gundam vs Gundam Next Plus, then you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. Vigina Gina, I actually don't know. I actually don't know this mobile suit until I played that game, and later I found out that oh, it came out from the F91 movie. So. Just a little small story right here. But anyway, just a quick uh, explanation of the RU100. RU100 is basically the Master Grade version of a XG. So Master Grade, you can think it as a RG, RU100, you can think it as a XG of the Master Grade. I don't know the I don't know did you understand what I'm saying or not, but this is basically how I would put it. So anyway, Vigina Gina is right here. So I'm pretty excited to build this because this is this is one of my childhood memory and and beside this RE100, the other Vigina Gina that you're ever gonna get, I think, is the very old one from the 80s. And seriously, that thing is outdated, that thing is not good. So RE100 will always be your best choice. So let's look at the side of the box right here. We can see some actions. Uh, all egg thrusters at the back right here is all movable. And then the other side right here, we can see the unit information. And then some some details. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's unbox it first. Now let's take a look at the instruction menu. I gotta say that the instruction menu is looking really nice. I especially like this kind of drawing right here. It's really nice. The box art is just really realistic, and I actually like it. And looking down here again is the unit information. Just quickly flick through the instruction menu. Some of the runner is duplicated, so some of the part might not be in use. Uh, wait, actually, only C one is the duplicate runner that not in use. Okay, so um, now let's just quickly flick through the instruction menu right here, and then back here we have the decals, and then at the back right here we have the weapons explanation right here. So. You can take a time, you can take some time and then look at it and then we have the color guide down here as well. The first one right here, we have an A1 runner right here. So we have obviously the legs part, we have the waist part right here. We have the legs part again right here. We have some, this is part of thruster, side skirt, and then we have the head part at the top right here, at the top right here. Uh, E1 and E2 runner, they are pretty much the same, so I'll just take E1. E1 right here, we can see the beam rival and then the bazooka. And then we can see the handle of the weapon right here. And then we can some, see some tubes from the chest and the uh, the head and the head and the chest, I think. I don't remember. And then we can see some thrusters part down here. We have the beam effect parts for the beam shield and the beam sabers. And we also have a clear piece for the head. We have two F1 runners, they are exactly the same. So this these part right here is definitely the thrusters. This one right here is the thruster part as well, thrusters, and then I don't know about the rest of these here. The C1 runner, uh, the, the torso part is duplicated, so it's not going to be in use. The C1 part have two of them, so I'll just take one. And uh, C1 part right here, we can see the torso, we can see the uh, part of the legs, and then we can see some backpack thrusters right here and then we can see some of the uh, this is the chest part and then the rest of it i'm not really sure i think this is the handpiece armor right here b1 and b2 they are exactly the same so i'll just take b1 uh b1 right here we can see some feet part right here we can see some arms part we can see some legs part right here and then this is legs part and i don't know about this and the rest of them is really hard for me to guess and i, I guess this is the beam sabers and this is part of the hands, I guess. Party caps, the D1 and D2, they're exactly the same. D1 and D2 is literally the inner frame of the Vigina Gina right here. So taking a brief guess, this will be the waist. This will be the waist part. This will be the waist part, legs part, legs part, uh, legs part. And then we have some hands option up here. And then we have some some uh, arms part as well. And I don't, I'm not really sure about this one right here. 
Lastly, the decals, you can see that there's a lot of decals right here and uh, both, mo most of them is pretty small. So I'm pretty excited to build this. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly build them and uh, I will see you guys at the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Vigina Gita. So this is the finishing of it. So first, I want to talk about my impression about the Reborn 100 or you can call it RD100S a short form. RE100 is giving me a impression of building an XG because when you're looking at the instruction menu when I'm personally assembling the uh, Gamma right here, it really gave me a feeling of XG uh, because it's simple and it's quick to build. It's not as a complicated structure like the Master Gray. So as I said, RE100 is more like a XG in the 1 to 100 line. So here's the summary. For those of you that says that XG is for people who have a lot of work in their daily life and don't really have time to enjoy Gamla, XG is good for them. Then for the RU100 is for people who are busy, but you still want to enjoy like 1 to 100 scale, RU100 is definitely for you because it don't really take a long time to build. But speaking of this finish right here, I think it looks absolutely amazing and this is possibly the only beginner gina that is the most updated that you ever get because i don't know that bandai will release a 1 to 144 or not because they are they are leaning more towards not releasing those late uz unit except for the protagonist suit but anyway that's another discussion right now when you're looking at the beginner gina finish i want you to take a closer look to it the color separation is doing a really fine job i think the cherry on the top for this gamble right here is uh ben will add another red runner so we can fill up the thruster thrusters um color and part of the legs supposed to be red as well you see those small thrusters right here they are supposed to be red as well and then turning to the back right here you can see that the thrusters right here is supposed to be red as well so i think the cherry on the top will be adding another red runner and then let us achieve that color separation then this veginagina is perfect in terms of color separation here is a quick lesson for everybody who are watching this video right now so at the late Universal Century timeline, the, you know, the mobile suit leaning more towards like a very small scale design. Right now, I took out my mud rock for the comparison because seriously, the RX-78 HGUC that I had is at really at the back of the shelf. It's very hard for me to get it out. So mud rock is right there. So I'll just take it out for the comparison. But anyway, you get my point when you listen to the summary. So... Because the UC series, when they are really light at the like uh, 100 years, they leaning more towards like a small scale design. So right now, although the Vigina Gina is 1 to 100 scale, but when you're taking a look at uh, comparison with the 1 to 144 high grade universal century, you can see that the height is actually not really that different. If you took out the cannons right here, it's actually the Vigina is it's just slightly taller. It's just very slightly taller if you include the cannon they are basically the same height what i'm trying to say is because of the late uc design so this beginner you know, right here even if you finish the whole build it might not give you that gigantic feeling that master grade gave you that very impressive scale they don't really give you that feeling right now the re100 for the beginner you know, because as i said the design problem right now as i said it only really gave you a xg feeling during to the height and the assemble process as usual we are going to start with the head articulation right here so first when you're looking at the head right here you can see that the big logo at the center right here you know i followed to the uh, guide right here and i decided to recreate the original beginner gina and not the capture one so i follow that uh, i follow that setting right there so that's why i put on the logo Anyway, when you're looking at the design right here, so first looking at the design of the head right here, you can clearly see that the head design is really based on a noble knight helmet design. A lot of people don't like that actually. A lot of people dislike this head for some reason. So um, I think that it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty decent as well. So first, let's look at the articulation right here. So first lift up is pretty nice. Lift down is really nice and then moving around there's absolutely no interruption so you can just move the head to like whatever angle that you want so it's really nice and then looking at the detail of of the face right here the face detail right here is really nice and then it's going along really well with the clear piece right here in my opinion although there's a thing that i wish that the head gave is the back of the head right here that's supposed to be a uh, blue 
uh, camera piece right here. I wish they can give us by the clear parts or stickers, but unfortunately you have to repaint the back camera by yourself. And also there's a small detail about the decals right here. You can see there's a flower. There's a flower taped on the head right here. It's actually from one of the scenes from the F91 movie. For those of you that never watch it, I will try to find the scene and let you watch it. Let's take a look at the chest right here. The chest color separation is doing a really nice job, but unfortunately this is a Reborn 100, so there's no cockpit opening feature. So all you get is just like a high grade version, uh, which is a very simple torso right here. So let's let's take a look at the torso um, articulation right now. So first, uh, moving side to side is a pretty decent angle and then moving up and down, there's a specific joint for this. So it can move a little bit more than the normal model. So the articulation at the torso right here, um, I would say that is pretty average. And also there's a piece for you. So at the cockpit hatch right now, right now you're seeing a round cockpit hatch right here. But if you want to create the capture version of the Vigina Gina Days, it actually gave you another separate piece right here that is uh, sanded to a square corner. This one right here, when you put it on and then you remove the logo from the head, then it's the capture version of the Vigina Gina. So that little touch right there, I think is really good. Now let's take a look at the arms articulation right here. So first you can move 360 and inside the arms joint right here, they have a new joint design where it locked the arm. So what it means is the arms will not pop out as the early RU100s where they rely on using poly caps. It's really easy to fall out. The arms is really easy to fall out once you rotate the arms or moving the arms. So this one right here, they improved the joint and Right now, the arms is really stable. So now let's keep looking at the articulation right here. So at the side of the shoulder armor right here, there's a little piece right here that's movable. And then for the lift up angle right here, unfortunately, because the design of the RE100 right here is, you know, the lifting angle is not really that impressive. And then, you know, for the bending is not really that impressive as well. It's pretty average. Hand piece right here, uh, it can move a lot as well. So it really helps you to pose with your weapon. So that articulation right here is really nice. And then for the side of the, at the side of the um, hands right here, uh, it's slightly movable as well. The whole arm can rotate. The arms can also move to the front right here. And then the whole shoulder can lift up and lift down as well. And then when you take a close look to the shoulders right here, there's basically nothing you need to repaint. Uh, every color that on the shoulder is by part separation. So that part right there is really impressive. Let's take a look at the waist armor right here. The waist armor is actually is actually really amazing. I gotta tell you that they put a lot of work into the waist armor right here. Each waist armor, uh, all, they have decals and the details at the outside right here. What about the inside? So first, let's lift up the front skirt armor right here. So first, the first skirt armor, uh, the front skirt armor is pretty nice as well. You can lift up near to 180. And then when you're taking a look inside, you can see the details inside the skirt armor. It's really nice. Oh, you thought only the front skirt armor? The side skirt armor right here is a ball joint. Uh, and you can see there's some details inside the side skirt armor as well. So the lift up angle of the side skirt is pretty nice as well. What about the back skirt? Unfortunately, the back skirt, you cannot really move it. But when if you take a close look to the back skirt right here, you can see the details inside the back skirt as well. So the skirt armor de details is really nice. And then at the back skirt right here, obviously we have two beam sabers, but this be two beam sabers right here is pretty annoying to take it out. First, you have to remove the backpack, then you need to take out the beam saber saber rack and then you take out the beam saber and then you put back the beam saber rack and then you put back the uh, backpack on it. So first, it's pretty annoying to take out a beam saber for pose and two, I wish they can change it to a sliding mechanic. So it's really, it's easier for us to take out the beam saber and then pose with it. Let's take a look at the legs articulation right here. So first the legs can kick to the front over 90 degrees, kicking to the side exactly 90 degrees. The bending, the bending is exactly 90 degrees or close to it. Well, the bending is not really that impressive because it's only a double joint. So seriously, what can you expect? And then the at the top at the top of the legs right here, you can, you know, slightly change the angles. And then at the back of the leg right here, you can see there's three pieces of thrusters right here. But I do want to talk about something right here because as you can see right here, there's three thrusters at the back of the legs right here. But 
the stability of the thrusters is actually really questionable. Why? The bottom two is really nice, but the top one, they always, always, always fell out. And once they have and once they fell out, it's really hard for me to put it back again. So I really dislike that part right there. I wish they can change it to I wish they can change the thrusters just like the rest of the two thrusters right here. They just, you know, put it inside to the piece right here instead of just hanging over as some um as some joints right here. So I think that part is pretty annoying and you might want to do something about it. And again, as I said, uh, at the side of the legs right here, there's some part that you need to recolor. Uh, this part supposed to be red right here, red, 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 and then at the feet right here is red again as well. So a lot of part that you need to recolor, just the very small parts. And then for the armor right here, you can move as well for the feet back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, side to side. So the feet articulation overall is pretty nice, but that thruster right there is pretty much ruining the perfect design. So again, just like most of the model, each leg right here, you can move the position of the leg, you can adjust it. But I do want to say that the joint on the legs right here is really easy to, you know, fall out when I'm adjusting the legs position right here. So again, aside from the, oh my god, the thrusters just fall out again. <laughs> aside from the thrusters right here, I think this part right here is pretty annoying as well. When you're moving it and then, you know, the the part just disconnect itself. So that part right there is pretty annoying as well. You might want to watch out. Let's take a look at the backpack right here. So this backpack right here, I like this kind of backpack. Unique, then I will take it. If you're just looking at the middle of the backpack right here, it felt really boring. It's just a normal backpack and then with two thrusters that you need to repaint to red. And then what about the rest of the end back rings right here? Well, you guess it right. Every single one of them is movable. Every single one of them is movable. So that means that you can adjust to whatever direction that you want. And, you know, when these kind of airbag wings have this kind of free movement right here, when you're posing with your gamma, it makes your gamma feel more natural for these kind of uh, adjustable wings right here. I really like this kind of thrusters. So, you know, when I'm making poses, it can make the, you know, thruster pose look more natural. I like that part. And speaking of the moving moving angle, it's, a, it's around a little bit more than 90 degrees, but I think that's enough. You know, before I talk about the accessory right here, I want to talk about a small story. So first, when I was building the weapons part of the RE100, um, I can't find a short lancer. For those of you that play the Gundam vs Gundam Next Plus, and then you know that Vegina Gina have two skills. One of them is rotate, and then it will strike out a uh, short lancer, and then you know, kind of like uh, keep stunning your enemy. And then the other one is that uh, it shot out the short lancer tip, and then it stuns your enemy or paral paralyze your enemy. So for those two skills right there. So since I was a kid, I always thought that Shot Lancer is one of the official weapon of the Vigina Gina. But right now, when I'm looking at the kit right here and then I check the original settings, the Shot Lancer was actually never existed as a as an official weapon for the Vigina Gina right here. But you know, it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know how to talk about that feeling. It's kind of like, I wish they can provide us a shot laser as well, because, you know, in my memory, beginner again, always have that shot laser that's shooting out to the enemy, but fine, it's fine. So the first weapon that we're going to take a look at is the beam rifle right here. So the beam rifle, unfortunately, the scope, you have to repaint it uh, by yourself again. And then for this beam rifle right here, honestly, there's not much to look at. But there's one thing that is pretty nice, though, is that Bandai changed the design. And then right now you can hold the beam rifle and the beam launcher on whatever hand that you want and for the articulation of this beam rifle right here the only thing that is movable is the sub handle right here and other than that honestly this beam rifle is not really that interesting the next weapon we're gonna look at is the beam launcher as well again just like the beam rifle it have two joints on the handle right here so it allow you to use on the left hand or the right hand either one so this beam launcher right here is actually really boring. What I mean is just like the beam rifle, it only got one articulation at the handle right here and that's it. The rest of them um, is not really that interesting. And the I assume this is a magazine. The magazine cannot even pull down as well. There's honestly nothing interesting about this beam launcher. This is the beam shield. This beam shield, um, what I'm going to say is 
you know, it's a pretty average beam shield right here. So, you know, let's just put it on. So how do you put on the beam shield? It's actually really annoying. Uh, what I mean by annoying is that uh, this piece right here, you need to pull down this gray piece right here in order to put in the beam shield. But this gray, sh uh, but this gray part right here is actually really hard to pull out. And uh, I just don't really like it. So be right back one eternity later okay before i put on the beam shield i just want to go through another story so as cool as the beam shield looks in the anime and is really efficient in the anime setting but on the gamma on any type of gamma when they involve beam shield i dislike it because it's really hard for me to pull out the surface piece and then just plug in the beam shield it's really difficult and it's honestly really annoying for me to pull out that very small piece to put in the beam shield but anyway i pulled it out that's a side topic so let's get back to the top uh, main topic so right now what you have to do is just put the gray piece onto the beam uh beam shield effect part and then you just put in put back to the um beam shield generator and here you go you have the beam shield right here i gotta say that this beam shield right here it felt really large and is actually kind of interrupting the arms movement so it might be a very difficult time for me to get the get a very natural pose so the last accessory that we got is just two beam saber effect part right here i curved one of them for me to shoot the photos later but right now i'm gonna test that do I really have to take off the backpack to get out the beam saber? I just want to test that part. Okay, the experiment proved that you cannot take off the beam sabers without removing the backpack. That's just really annoying. Okay, so I'm going to do the official, official part. So first, we're going to remove the backpack. And then we are going to take out the beam sabers. And let's take a look at the beam sabers. So this is the legendary beam saber right here. As you can see, there's a little plug right here for you to plug into the hands and use it. But seriously, why can't they just change the beam sabers to a sliding mechanic so it's easier for us to slide it out and then, and then you know, just use it. Because right now, the backpack is actually pretty tight when I'm trying to pull it out. So if you do too much, if you just do too much pulling, eventually the part is going to get a little bit sloppy. So I don't really recommend you to keep pulling out the beam sabers and then keep posing with it because it's really easy to damage the parts. All right, this is the end of the Vigina Gina review. So thank you guys for watching this video. Vigina Gina, I will give my summary like this. If you are someone who looking for a cheap and easy to pose gamma, this one, you, this can be your must buy because it's really easy to build and it's really cheap. Uh, I bought it for 60 or $62. I forgot, 60, 62, I, I, I don't really remember, but whatever. So. It's a very cheap price and it's really easy to build as well. So, but and also it don't really have that white problem of the master grade because personally I have this experience right here when I'm trying to pose with master grade because they are really heavy. So sometimes my extra base is shaking. I'm really worried that my master that that my master grade will break my extra base. So. RU100 right here because this one right here is way more lighter so you don't have to worry about this problem and you can post and you can post with it just like what you did to RG or XG so this part right here I think is amazing so if you're someone who like to post with example RU100 Vigina you can definitely pick this up and have fun with it so this is the end of the video thank you guys for watching so be sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Leave a like on my videos and comment on it about your thoughts. So I'll see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.